Hello everyone, welcome to the session and uh, today we are going to discuss very important topic and trust me, it is very important for the every network and security engineer, even if you are planning for the cloud engineer, your career, that is also equally important for you. So it's a very unique topic I'm going to discuss with you all based on my experience, based on what I have done the solution for the different different organizations, different different customers. So the topic basically, what I'm going to discuss basically today, how the low level and high level design can be done, right? So we keep discussing about the HLD, right? And uh, we keep discussing about the LLD. But people are not aware what is the HLD and what is the LLD and what is the step by step uh, process to just you know work on this HLD and LLD and what is the like design and like implementation plan or might be the design and implementation strategy should be happen and what are the key things you always have to take care in your mind when you're going to just implement any network or design any network or let's suppose you are working for any client any customer then how this design and implementation is going to take in place right so today i'm going to discuss more about the design strategy so welcome you all in the today's session and uh, you see as per the topic let me move to the next slide and uh, we are going to discuss about the comprehensive network and security architecture planning and design what is the step-by-step -step process and what should be your mindset <clears throat> when you are just planning and designing network and how those mindsets should be executed in proper manner. So just, you know, your network planning and design should be like as per the industry requirement and that is going to be more robust for your organization requirement as well. It's not like something you design, but that is not reliable, that is not, you know, sustainable. So we have to think about this all point of view, right? So the topic is going to be very interesting and I'll just break down all the specs, right? Which area, what kind of things you have to focus? What is my HLD? What is my LLD, right? And also we have to understand, right? Uh, step by step process, how this HLD and LLD can be defined and what is the step by step process to just make sure whatever my HLD and LLD we have, just that is going to be happen in case of the any implementation and design, okay? So I was discussing, right, uh, the comprehensive network and security architecture planning and design, right? So being a principal solution architect and uh, also work for the different different company, I, completely understand the pain of any designer, any solution architect, or might be someone who are just working on the level two engineer, level three engineer, and they are in the operation job and they want to migrate their career, right? They want to migrate their career in the like uh, design and might be the, you know, architecture role. So that is uh, absolutely, I can understand it's a painful area, right? The transitions from the any operation job to design role, architect role, it's not easy job, right? First of all, when you are going to work for the any kind of the operation, like you are just supporting the BAU work, right? And that BAU related to your NOC, related to your SOC, might be you are just doing that your kind of the implementation also, right? So these kind of the work are Point, uh, uh, this quite looks like uh, your day-to-day -day work, you know what have to do that, means incident is going to come, you have to do the break fix in this knock and shock. You are doing the implementation, so probably your script will be ready and you know how to build this script. Someone is going to design the document and based on document, let's suppose they connect the router, they connect the switch, right? <laughs> Together, they know how to build the ether channel where my ethernet circuit not, uh, need to be terminated, what kind of the protocol I need to add it here. Additionally, also, you know, like uh, if I want to run the BGP for the van or might be the SD-WAN for the van, then how it is going to be look like for the configuration point of view. So everything is predefined. You just have to follow the document and based on that document, you're just going to do the implementation. But when you just become the architect, right? And 
when you become the design, right? Like network planner or might be the designer or might be the architect of network or security infrastructure. Then your mindset, <clears throat> not limited to the NOC, not limited to the SOC, not limited to the implement, uh, implementations. It's more beyond of that because you have to think overall for the network means entire globally how my network is going to be look like and what kind of the routing protocol I need to add in my network, what kind of the SD-WAN solution I need to add in my network, what kind of the cyber security I need to bring in my organization, what kind of the cloud security I need to bring in my organizations, what kind of the yeah, my land data center is going to be look like and all component together, how they are going to interconnect it with the scalable or reliable connectivity. So that mindset you have to build. So this is the most important you have to understand. So being an operational engineer, NOC, SOC engineer, L2, L3 engineer, it's just you're doing the something. Someone has done some for you and you're just managing those things. But if you want to become someone who have done very larger scale of things, then you have to change your mindset as well, right? So that's why being the principal security architect or solution designer, I can understand. And that's why I just prepare some kind of the network planning and design, design strategy plan. Total, we have to discuss 10 plan, step-by-step -step process, how it is going to be start from the plan one and how it is going to end with the plan 10 right so i just capture some bullet points right and these are the very important point we can add more point but i just wanted to simplify it so you can understand how you can develop your thought process most important thing your thought process you have to come out from your legacy process just doing the you know daily operation doing some bgp configuration like just doing some kind of the routing manipulation, switching kind of the configuration, data center troubleshooting, interface troubleshooting. No, you can do that. Definitely, it is very important. But also, you have to think how my data center has been designed, right? Why I have four link connected between two switches? Why not I can connect a single switch? Why only I required four switch in my network? Why not eight switch? Why not single switch? Why only two router is going to require? Why only MPLS and internet is going to be connected? Why SD-WAN is there? Why my Palo Alto firewall come in a picture? Why 48 firewall come in a picture? And why I have the data center, in-house data center, also I have the cloud-based data center. Why my some applications are hosted in my cloud applications, data center, and some are the in-house. So we have a lot of questions. And based on that questions, you have to answer, like to understand the strategy of the network planning and designing. So I'm just using the word network planning and designing, but it is also going to same approach for the security planning, because I'm just targeting network plus security, how it is going to be planned and designed, including the cloud as well. So you can see the first step here, it is written as if you want to start with any planning and designing, then probably you have to understand comprehensive network design means designing a comprehensive network like it is going to involve integrating various elements to create the robust infrastructure means the major thing you have to think whenever you just plan anything for the network designing that network should be very robust very reliable very scalable so you just have to think about your LAN infrastructure, how my LAN is going to be look like. You have to think about your WAN infrastructures, how they are going to happen for just for the network connectivity. And also you have to think about WLAN. And at the same time, you also think about the cost. Means there are a lot of vendors available in the market. So if you're just going for the network design, pure network design. So basically in network design, you have the LAN, you have the WAN, and also you have the data center. So you just have to do the comparison analysis. What kind of switches I need to use for the, my LAN infrastructure? Which vendor? It's a Cisco, it's Meraki, it's Juniper, it's HP, it's a Nokia, some Versa SD-WAN, some 40 gate, SD, 40 gate like uh, devices. So 
totally you have to think and you have to do the comparative analysis as well so you have to understand the different different vendor pricing as well okay and their feature as well so we'll discuss in detail but yes this is the first step being a network designer you have to think about it similarly when you just think about the security designing then it also going to discuss like it's very crucial how my network is going to be protected my network has been designed you design a very beautiful house but which lock I need to install, which kind of the lock is going to be very reliable, which CCTV camera I need to install so my house is going to be protected, which kind of door I need to install, which kind of the window I need to install, which kind of, which kind of the slider I need to install in my house. So anyone if trying to come in my house, so it is going to protect my house and they cannot enter in my without promise uh, like permissions. So similarly security infrastructure is also going to play a very vital role, right? So we'll define security architecture is very crucial here. Like that is going to protect your sensitive data. Might we have taken example for the healthcare customers here for the enterprise customer. Might be you have the banking customers. You have any kind of the FMCG customer. You have any kind of the enterprise other customers also more automobile customers. Any kind of the oil and mining customers. So those customers having very sensitive data. So those data, any kind of the malicious content tax that should be well, you know, kind of the protected. So your design should be looked like in very robust way. So that is going to protect it. Also, it's not only your work from office user is going to be protected. You have to think how my work from home user is going to protect it. Even I'm working from the office, if I'm working from the home, then how my entire end to end, if the user is using the office device, user is not using the office device, they're using the BOID device, right? Sorry, BOID device, then how bring your own devices. So how this is going to be protected. So that level of thinking also you have to develop. So for you, for that, you have to just think about the endpoint solution. You have to think about the VPN solution. You have to think about the firewall solution. You have to think about the proxy solution. You have to think about the SASE solution. So a lot of solutions are here. So you have to figure it out. Which solution is basically going to be cost effective for my company. At the same time, is it really going to work to just meet my all requirement? So that is also, and at the most important, it should be not much complex. It should be the like the user friendly. My engineers can easily handle them and they can do the troubleshooting. They can do the configuration easily without any problems. So you understand the first step, you start thinking about the this network design planning and security design planning, and then similar for the cloud infrastructure. So these are the three pillars where you have to put your all efforts. And based on that, you just going to integrate, then we'll discuss how this careful planning is going to happen. And then we'll discuss what is the step-by-step -step process and how the different different stakeholder is going to be engaged. Let me just show you, probably we have something. So yeah, so we have to discuss with the stakeholder document education. So we'll discuss about that. What is does mean, right? So let me complete this first. So uh, cloud infrastructure means how the, my cloud infrastructure is going to happen. Which cloud I'm going to opt is Azure cloud, it's AWS cloud, which type of services I'm going to host in the cloud is just a SaaS based solutions I'm going to get. I'm going to get as a like infrastructure services, platform as a services, then what kind of the application I'm going to host based on the SaaS application infrastructure, what kind of the application runtime I'm going to host there and also what type of the OS version and all I want to host there. So based on that, I have to finalize my cloud and also the cost application where I'm going to host that other networking component I'm going to host there. Let's suppose I want to form the NSXT environment, right? So NSXT is basically NSX, sorry, let me put it here. NSXT is basically Azure based cloud environment. So here you can entirely build your data centers and that is a completely based on the Azure. Here you can define your F5 load balancer. You can define the Palo Alto firewalls. You can define your other kind of the uh, load balancer for the F5, you can define the different different virtual circuits and based on that, you can just integrate your all branch location to access those kind of the fabric. So that also it's a very important. So you should have the very good cloud knowledge as well. Being a principal security architect, you should have the Azure level knowledge. You have the AWS level knowledge. You have kind of the GCP level of knowledge. So then it is going to be give the very good insights 
how my any healthcare customer, any automobile customer, any enterprise customer, any oil and mining customer, any kind of the banking service customers are going to leverage my cloud infrastructure. And based on that, they're going to protect each and everything. All right. So now we have the planning and designing for the network security and cloud. So that going to start either of the technology with the careful planning, right? So careful, careful planning is a very essential to ensure that whatever the component, right, they are going to integrate in my organization. They should be function seamlessly and they should be integrated without any problem. It's not, it should not like I bring some cloud solutions and bring some security solution and network solution. They all are not very, you know, uh, kind of the uh, seamless integration is going to be happened all three together. Might be have the complexity, a lot of hurdles, huge cases are going to be, you know, POC is going to be failed. So we are struggling. We are just, you know, doing a lot of kind of the testing and all. So it should not like, like without the simple integration should be there with all my organization requirement. That's the careful planning. So you just have to think about the vendors, you think about the reliability of their products and also their integration. What are the feature of the integration available, right? Also, we have to put the attention on the details, right? Uh, we have to figure it out, right? Uh, potential issue, what is happening in my network currently? And uh, if I'm going to design anything, what kind of the optimization I'm going to get? What kind of the cost I'm going to save, right? And uh, if any potential, like gap, I'm going to find that. So which vendor is suitable, which product is suitable to just fill out those kind of the details that also you have to think. So careful planning, you have to put very like uh, detailed understanding for the entire network infrastructure, right? And just you have to follow the structured approach. This is your mindset, like positive mindset. Like you can think, think about like the wider mindset. So structured approach means you have to do something systematically addressing your all network security and cloud like parameters. So it should not like I in my mind saying I can deploy this and after two year, this particular things which you thought and deploy network might be it is not compatible with some other solutions. So you have to think what is the structured approach and if something services I'm going to take in my network or my cloud solutions or might be security solution that should be also kind of the you know uh, seamless integration seamless like intervendor operability that should be intact there it should not like something is going to be you know again redesign re-architect for my network so structure approach is very important we should follow the structured approach that is going to be systematically we should address the all aspect of the network design security design and cloud design now the most important, let's suppose you bring all these, you want to design anything in network and anything. So we have to work on the LLD that is low as a low level design. We have two things. One is the LLD that is a low level design. Another is the HLD, right? So HLD is the high level design. So these are two things. So HLD is your high level design that always come first hld always come first this guys give me one second so i was discussing guys right so high level design and low level design that's the most important because once you are going to become the network architect you are going to become the solution designer network consultant or might be the network designer you have to start work on the hld and lld First LLD, HLD is going to prepare and then HLD is going to prepare. Why HLD and why LLD? I definitely show you and I'll definitely give the detailed explanation about it. But you just think about HLD is a high level design. Let's suppose I, one company, let's suppose, uh, take an example, uh, Bank of America, right? This is the one company, reach out to SCL and saying that I have the global presence all across world. I have the offices might be they have the 500 branches or 1000 branches and they asking us SCL basically, can you design my network? Can you design my network 
where I want to include my network component, how your WAN design should be look like, how your LAN design is going to be look like, right? And how my data center is going to be look like. So all three components. In addition of that, I have some application hosted in the Azure. I have some application hosted in the AWS. Then how the integration is going to happen for these applications for your LAN and WAN design. And also you have to make sure how my security is going to be intact for the any kind of the communication, either my user are working for the home, user are working from the office, right? In a hybrid culture, and they are accessing private application, public application, cloud-based application, internet application, then how all security is going to be intact to make sure whatever the transition is happening for my employee machine or my network for my application, that should have the zero trust concept, right? So zero trust means there would be pure authentication, verification, and any kind of transition should be always scanned by my security perimeters. So that is the most important. Then your SEL company is going to bring a like high level design and they're going to present to your customer. Okay, that's fine. You are trying to like uh, take as a vendor, like suppose SEL is going to select it for the vendor for the Bank of America. So they are prepared first high level design and based on that high level design, they are going to showcase how your network is going to be look like means they are going to talk like very high level means we are going to use this kind of the van design. We are going to look this kind of land. Then let me show you something so you can understand what I'm trying to make a point. So just if you go for the HRD or network if you just show so you can see these are the high level design probably you can find on the internet so it's just not going to contain any kind of the low level information what is the low level information means what kind of the routing protocol i'm going to use what kind of the uh, interfaces are going to be connected which model of device i'm going to connect which kind of the bandwidth i'm going to connect what kind of the IP I'm going to configure on the, you know, interfaces switch in the router. So they are not going to give that kind of the flavor. They are just discussing about the high level. Somebody you can see like uh, shown here. So these are the plain network. They are going to just draw here. Yeah, this is your branch location. They are going to, going to connect the van aggregation and then it is going to connect your data center and all. So this is your high level design. Okay. So I hope you guys understand about that. So low level and high level design is very important. So that's why they are talking about the low level design that is going to be focused, creating the detail for the implementation tailoring customer need. So low level design is basically is it is going to get all information of your site design means how my router is going to connect with my switch, what port is going to be connected, what IP is going to be defined. Everything is going to be, you know, what protocol I'm going to use what kind of the QS I'm going to use. I'll show you in the low level design as well. What kind of the might be uh, SAP I'm going to use, what model router I'm going to, everything means low level is every information. So you are going to do the configuration, actual configuration of the router that is going to be uh, there in the low level design. So this is the basic difference between the HLD and LLD. HLD is basically your no configuration, no low level information, only high level like drawing. You can just think of high level drawing, how my traffic is going to be look like. And if you're going to low level design, then you can just get each and everything in that particular design. Customer presentation you have, once you prepare the whole low level and high level design, you just have to make sure you just present this design to the customer. You have to take the uh, approval from the customer. Once customer is going to give the approvals, then you are going to go in the implementation phase. Means being a like designer and architect, you just did all kind of the analysis till this all point. Once you have done this kind of the analysis, next step is your implementation engineer. They are going to come in a picture and might be, this could be the L3 engineer, L2 engineer. And based on your low level design, they are going to actually implement the your design into the actual devices. So that's why implementation is going to come. And then finally, once implementation is done, your site is going to be handed over to either the NOC or SOC or the cloud support for the BAU operation, business as usual for the day-to-day -day operations. 
So this is the how journey is going to be start for any kind of network design planning. And then finally it is going to hand over to the any kind of the knock and sock operations. So I hope you guys must understand the step-by-step -step approach for the any designer. Designer roles are till eighth place, right? Once you have the customer approval for the, your LLD and HLD, means HLD is going to build first then LLD. Based on that LLD, you just put each and every information, but sometime implementate implementation engineers are going to be dedicated to do the like configuration. Sometimes designer and planner uh, also can do that. So what I can say, like you just understand the industry standard. They are a designer and solution architect. They have the specific role to just design and architect the network. And they give you the entire detail in the low level design. And based on the low level design, you just have to implement it. So let me show you how the low level design is going to be look like. And so you can a little bit understand about it. Let me show you. So let me, so I'm showing one of the example for the low level design. You just think, think this one and uh, let me, so we have some site solution backup and it's a draft format. So you can see whenever you're going to design the low level. So we have to prepare a table of content, right? What you're going to do that and uh, what kind of section, what kind of the technical detail you are going to put verification, router switch capability and all. So we have a lot of information who that the initial configuration document creations, what amended amendment has been done with this particular design document, right? And you can see where the design document is going to be saved, right? what is designation and then you have to explain the purpose of this document and you can see there are some kind of the detail like this solution is going to be provide high level design so basically this is the high level hld i'll show the ld as well and basically it is going to provide the backup facility to be provided to the you know auction and also site so this is basically talking about the site hld not LLD. So they are talking about like uh, different, different kind of the, uh, like can GT router support the required functionality. So you just have to give sometime customer asks the questions and based on that, you just have to give the high level answers as well. So those answers are given here. So you can see these are documents. So this is the high level document. So somehow in this high level document, let me show you. You can see we not have any kind of the IP assignment. We not have any kind of the port information. We are not running any kind of the configuration. Just a high level means means this router is going to connect this router. We have the MPLS. We have the internet routers and a lot of things are available here. And based on that, you can just connect the different different site, different different branch locations. And based on that, you can just uh, uh, define some kind of the what kind of the OSP you are going to run. What the redistribution route is going to matrix. How it is going to happen normal working explanation you can just see like how my traffic flow is going to happen so you have to explain each and every information in also you have to explain what is the failover scenario is going to happen for the van routers it's a high level low level there's no configuration at all and also you have to tell something like content information so you can see this document is quite low right only we have how many pages i believe we have some a few pages only not more so you just have the nine pages because it's a high level document it's just showing the basic information like how the failover is going to happen, how the normal working scenario is going to happen, how my diagram is going to happen, who is doing what. So like you can see uh, one side is the GT router, one side the Gwinnett router. Just think about the, these two different company. I just, you know, uh, uh, just did for the representation purpose and you can have to see the cost, OSP, what is going to be done. And this is kind of the, you can see diagrams. And also you can see like L3 switch, yes, it is going to require and all. So it is a high level, right? But if I just talk about the low level, let me show you the low level as well. So low level is going to be always very detailed one. So let me show you the low level. So let me show you the low level. So this is my low level diagram. And you can see this is the WAN SSD for the, one of the site location. This is my site location. This is my case ID. And this is my site ID. So this is just your low level design. And there is some kind of confidentiality statement. You can see some copyright information. It is going to be by default put by your companies and all. And then also you have to give the table of content. And this table of content have the more information like WAN diagram, cutover plan, site detail, your OSPF, QS configuration, migration strategy, WAN cutover, fully migration. So a lot of things are available here. BGP timers, right? You can see equipment list when, 
So low level information is going to be give a lot of information to you. So I'm just showing the sample, how it is going to look like. And you can see these are the distribution lists. There are different, different contact you can see. And based on that contact, you can reach out to any of this particular uh, uh, stakeholder who designed the site, what is the program lead, what is the director, transformation manager, right? Oh, van work, uh, work stream lead. So you can see these are the available and based on that, you can connect to the different, different department. And then it is talking about the introduction of this particular LLD. So it have the total 31 page. So it is just explaining how the like document is going to be look like. So I'm not going to read each and everything, but I'm just showing you how LLD is going to be look like. And then now it is showing the how many changes has been made on this particular diagram and who have done and what did changes they have done. Now it is also showing who is going to get this LLD informations and different different document storage location. It is showing that. And here is the your like uh, your van uh, architecture overview. So you can see we have the talking about the your different different kind of the van. They're talking about this. This is how your van is going to be connected. Their branch is going to look like. But it's still the high level. But we will see the low level connectivity as well. So it's overall van connectivity for this MPLS domain. And based on that, we are just connecting to the different, different branch locations. And then they are talking about the, your different, different kind of the gateway. And it is talking about uh, different, different kind of the connectivity MPLS branch locations and QS connectivity. And also this is talking about detailed discussion about the QS, right? How it is going to be, uh, uh, how we can do that different, different kind of the QS strategy, right? So. Based on that, basically, we can understand entire feature of this, uh, like uh, QS strategy and the implementation plan of this particular low level design. So that's why we cannot basically uh, think about, right? LLD, HLD is the same thing. HLD is something you only get the overview, but LLD is going to give the insight of this everything. So see the QS is going to be look like how it is going to look like and that standard migration strategy and they're talking about site contact and site services. And then finally, they're talking about different, different, uh, like uh, who is going to test and turn up this migration stakeholder information. They are talking about current site. You can see this is your current site. They're talking about this migration, uh, like they are the UK based sites. And van cutover diagram, you can see these are different, different van cutover. This is the routing. See, the, now the configuration is very detailed. So actual configuration you are getting here. This is a low level. That was not ever in the high level. And now you can see the IP also you are getting here. Okay. So IP detail also you are getting there, which MPLS it is, right? So that detail also you are getting here. And at the same time, you can see this is a logical diagram where have the IP circuit. Every detail is available here. So that also you are getting from here. Technical detail also you are getting from here and reporting capacity, which kind of interface with device is going to use that also it is available. Management, BGP timer, everything, syslog. So rack unit where this device is going to install. So all detail is available here. And based on that detail, you can just do four. You can see a lot of uh, things are available in the pre-migration assumptions, what is going to be there. And finally, we have the van migration step leads, how it is going to happen, pre-migration application testing, how it is going to happen how actually migration day when the migration is going to happen what time what action we have to do that and who is going to do that the stakeholder also so this is also very important guys and uh, then your all migration flow is going to happen means migration is going to start if success then what is going to happen if no success then how the rollback plan is going to happen remediation plan how it is going to happen so you can see this is a different different steps migration verification step sign off then go no go and then the final is going site is going to be handed over to the operation team. So it's a quite very, you know, complex process. You have to design, write document. You have to prepare the configuration in single document. You have to take the approval from the customer. Customer engineering team is going to review everything. And then it is going to be approved. It's not like you just prepare and then it is going to approve. And then also proper check is going to happen. Pre-check and cross-check. If anything is going to be not work as per except, uh, like expected as per LLD, then your rollback plan also need to be discussed. So this document is quite long, but I just showed you for just for your overview. So at least you can understand how my low level high level design is going to be look like. Now understand about the HLD, understand about the LLD, and we understand how the my mindset is going to be look like. And then finally the implementation and the handover plan. Now let me break down a little bit. Like 
whenever you're just planning for the any kind of the migrations and the any kind of the new design you have to interview or this is not interview you just have to joint meeting with the stakeholder right because you have to gather the informations so that's why here i just talk about the high level but actual work is start from here being the solution designer and like uh, solution architect you have to start talking with the stakeholder like your application team who is managing the application your different different kind of the cloud team your server team what kind of the application what kind of the bandwidth they are using which kind of the location they are hosted the services based on that you have to gather the information about the specific need including the compliance requirement also they have to understand what the performance they are expecting and also you have to understand how their workflow is going to happen so this information is going to require based on that information you can use the you know document and use cases like you have to identify key applications which is going to each for the organization you have to identify user access need and the data flow especially regarding the sensitive health data or might be any banking data mining data any kind of the fmcg customer based data government id data so that is very important to you have to make a document as well so these are the first step whenever you want to do any planning and designing for your network so your meeting should be kick off with the, all the stakeholder within the customer within the organization or different different owner and you have to understand gather the information and then you have to start doing the documentation and then you can move to the first uh, the second step so in step one we have done the meeting in step two we have to understand their existing infrastructure let's suppose i am the customer and i'm coming to you and i'm saying i want to migrate my this infrastructure to the new infrastructure without any downtime or minimal downtime with latest technologies so i have to understand your existing infrastructure might be it is like working on the van and you want to migrate sd van right so you have to think about what is the my van solution and how can i migrate on the sd van and also have to think that which equipment i can reuse which circuit i can reuse which bandwidth i can reuse which cannot reuse similarly also for the lan which lan is running and now i want to migrate on the sd lan right sd access or can things and then how it is going to happen security let's suppose i am using the asa firewall now i want to migrate on the g scaler then how it is going to happen palo alto then how it is going to happen so existing infrastructure you just have to make sure you have to access and you have to analyze also you have to review your inventory means the customer inventory you have to go with one by one all inventory site detail what kind of devices connected what kind of model of devices connected and you have to make some kind of documentation including your lan van firewalls data center capabilities and also what is the current performance matrix we have means based on my current setup what is my performance what is the latency what kind of the like uh, user experience have so that i can have the threshold once this is my the old network and this is my the some benchmark now i am going to migrate in the new network so i should increase my benchmark in terms of the performance latency user experience that also that's why you have to prepare the performance matrix as well based on the analyzing the current performance data identity bottlenecks whatever we have insufficient uh, bandwidth in the network any other insufficient insufficient issue in the network that also you have to analyze that is your step 2 so first is talking gathering the information then you just have to again doing the more research on inventory and the performance related thing that is step 2 now in step 3 you have to start working actual designing network architecture or security architecture in the cloud architecture so what is going to happen in this step 3 you have to first start thinking about the lan design right then we have to go on the van design and then we go for the cloud and security as well so let's suppose i just done with my all homework inventory performance i just done with the stakeholder now let's suppose i have to design first lan so what i have to think about the lan design so in lan design i have to think what kind of the lan switch i need to use that's the layer 2 switch layer 3 switch which vendor i have to use right and what is my lan design it's like the collapse core design it's the tier 3 architecture or might be the single access switch need to be connected 
So that level of design also you have to think which is my layer three switch model is going to happen. It's like a VSS is going to there. It's a catalyst nine case which is going to be there. It's a nexus environment is going to be there. Normal stack switch is going to be there. It is totally depend on your current organization need means based on this performance, current configuration, the application. So probably we can have this specific use case, which scenario I have to use nexus, which scenario I have to use an uh, a stack switch, which scenario I have to use a normal uh, collapse core architecture in, in the tier three architecture or might be normal switch. So that we have to discuss, but I'm just talking about the mindset. You have to think about this switching strategy and then you have to think about what kind of VLAN I have to implement, right? So VLAN segmentation also going to very important like subnet identification. What is the range of subnet is going to be happen? It's a slash 24, slash 23, slash, slash 16, slash 18, 19, totally depend on your user size, right? And what kind of the different different like department I have and based on that department, how can I implement the my VLAN segregations? And also I have to make sure the ACLs, how my ACL access control list need to be applied to just control my traffic and whatever moving through my network. So that is also very important guys. And then we have to move over the van and SD van design. So once we're done with the LAN, then we have to start finalizing with which vendor is compatible for me. Means initially you have done with the vendor, like which vendor, once you've done this planning, right? So your vendor is going to be most of the case customer and you are going to be finalized because you have the competitive analysis, which vendor is going to be more uh, beneficial for you and uh, cost effective as well and reliable as well. So after vendor, like, you have to define the which vendor is going to then how one architecture is going to look like it's a hybrid approach or MPLS internet connectivity is going to be there or completely internet based circuit completely MPLS based circuit or might be internet and the 4G and 5G based circuit LT circuits. So you have to think about it uh, by cost factor also it is going to be important and bandwidth also going to be important and the, also you have to check in country which kind of the services are available it's not like some country even MPLS is too much costly and internet is very unreliable. So even if you're just making the uh, consideration for the generic for the all country, that is not going to work. You have to change design as per the country and region specific as well. Okay. And then you have to think about the sd -band implementation, how it is going to happen, what kind of redundancy I have to use, right? Now, how can we integrate it and the existing infrastructure is going to be uh, compatible with the sd -band solutions or not. And also you have to think about the traffic management and everything. So when design, when architecture is also very important, LAN is also very important. And then we have to, once we've done the network design, where we have to more think about the LAN and WAN. I didn't capture the data center because I'm just targeting for the normal LAN WAN network design and architecture and the security architecture. So that's why I removed the data center in this slide. But I'll make the specific requirement like the SCI, SDXS, how it is going to be done in the our Nexus in data center. Then I can make the special series for that and you guys can going to understand about that. Okay. So once we're done, then we have the security architecture design. And in this security architecture design, you have to think about the security perimeters like the firewalls, G scaler, SASE solutions. So you can see, you have to think about the firewalls, which firewall is going to be used, which VPN access I need to use for just work from home user or who is working in the hybrid culture. So that firewall, you have to define the policies, you have to in enable the IBS, IDS, IPS engines, right? And also you have to define the VPNs. So these firewall model, which is going to be best for my company, for the branch, mid level branch, large level branch, small level branch, you have to define. Also which VPN solution I need to take. So that also going to come in a picture like remote access VPN, we have the <coughs> Cisco is like the, we have, uh, uh, that is, uh, I forgot the name, uh, there's like Palo Alto, we have the Global Protect, any connect Cisco and uh, any connect Cisco, Palo Alto, Global Protect and the 40 get 40 client, G -Skiller, GP access. So every vendor have their own VPN solution. So you have to use wisely and then your secure design is going to be happen. And then also very important internal security means you being a security engineer, you just not stop thinking about your firewall level or might be the size level solution also you have to think about the micro segmentations like within the company if any threat is going to let's virus impacted one of the pc so that pc virus cannot propagate to another office colleague or might be the another another department office 
So my once virus is detected in one PC in my LAN network, that should be stopped. So that is the micro segmentation. Literal movement should be restricted. So that kind of the endpoint security and your might be if you are just know about the G scale solution, they use the decoy, right? So based on the decoy, right? Um, if you just go on the G scaler, let, let me just decoy. So they use the concept of decoy. So they use the decoy. Decoy is just, you know, that is not a deception technology. So that deception technology use the decoy. Based on decoy, they are going to like uh, deploy some fake credential, fake kind of the username, password, and any hacker, any virus, let's suppose vulnerability is going to attack those kind of the uh, liquidity, just it's kind of the, you know, fake game is going to create it for you and you're going to uh, in a trap. So once you're in the trap, the G scaler uh, deception technology is going to understand someone is just did something that is a malicious thing and they're going to catch you. They're going to just, you know, uh, remove you from the network or might be isolated users from the network. So that is going to protect your user application with the decoy. So endpoint lures and decoy application server user enterprise resources silently detect the threats and the attacker activities that's the meaning of the decoy so it's basically it's a fake activity they are going to deploy in the network and any other infrastructure and someone is going to just try to catch them so they are just going to catch you and it's going to be put in the trap and you're going to be kicked out from the network so this is the like uh, uh, feature we have and similar feature available with other vendor so that's why the micro segmentation is very important. Implement micro segmenter within your network to just restrict any literal movement in the threads of the network. Endpoint security is also very important. So you have to very uh, like uh, very specific for the protection for the endpoint devices with this also. So being security architects, you also you can suggest that. And then we talk about the cloud security, cloud network. So you have to know about what is my cloud network, cloud security, what is my cloud proxy implementation is going to happen how my identity and uh, access management is going to be happen in normal infra and the cloud infra also. So that kind of the strategy also you should know. You should know what that means the IEM and how we can deploy the identity management for the user or might with the workloads, how they are going to communicate together and identity is going to be how approved that, right? And also you have to think about, I just include one of the data center slides just to showcase you how my data center de design is going to be uh, like uh, architect and design based on the Azure, AWS and that uh, your step by step, like how the zone, virtual network and the ability zone, redundancy, how it is going to be achieved that also you have to think about. I'm not talking in much detail. I'm just talking in very short because I just want to give the overview how things it's complex when you're going to become the network or security engineer or might be the architect level of engineer, right? So also you have to think load balancer point of view, how my traffic is going to be load balance. Also you have to think about the disaster recovery. So that cloud design, data center design that you all have to think about like load balancer, disaster and your cloud setup. And then you start doing the HRD preparations because you have the entire detail so you can start preparing the HRD and for the network switching configuration, right? How it is going to be happen and uh, uh, routing configuration, WAN design configuration, static route, dynamic route, everything you're going to put in the HRD, LLD. And uh, based on that, you are going to give, uh, like get the approvals from the your customers. So you have to present the LLD to the customer where everything is going to be like uh, put it configuration device solution you have to write a step by step in the document okay so customer is going to review and based on the customer review your uh, approval is going to be there that that is going to be validated the customer team is going to be happy then you are going to finally move in the implementation phase where your technical specification is going to be assessed by your implementation team and they are going to implement your all whatever the network security and cloud infrastructure is going to happen that is going to be implemented and finally once we have the implementation then we have the testing means how my network performing after like uh, implementing the new solutions and also what is my security assessment it's my network is secure or non-secure that testing is going to be happen validation is going to be happen and after testing validation final thing we have to do the trainings 
because we design something so my knock and sock team should be know how the, my traffic flow is going to look like how my design traffic is going to be you know uh, defined in my you know actual ld so how they are going to understand so we have to arrange the kt sessing that is a training and handover and we have to provide a session to the knock it knock and sock team who is going to just manage after the design and implementation full uh, focused infrastructure like means they have the complete knowledge then they are going to do the troubleshoot and they monitor and they can do some kind of break fix as well and then we can do the handover documentation where we just give the all hld lld and other documentation support documentation to them so they can work further on it so what is the conclusion so in conclusion we understand what is the step by step approach in the first slide and this 10 step process we understand in this particular presentations we have to follow this step by step approach till 10 right and this further 10 approach has been classified in different different sections and we understand the unique requirement what is the unique requirement addressing and all secure access efficient network scalable network regular review we need to be required update designs also we have to put i'll show you how the update is going to be happen any changes is going to happen network then design must be updated and also technology advancement is going to happen that also going to be put in the design section and you have to give the kt and handover to your training uh, means the knock and sock team so i hope guys you really understand at least overview of what is the hld what is the lld and what is my design and network architect approach and if we have a still query right and uh, you want to discuss more you want to talk one to one with me so just text me uh, on this number right and also you can visit this website you can just write the email uh, to us also on this uh, info at the red let me just put here guinet.com so you can write just write an email as well so i'll review your query and we can have the one to one discussion even if you have any project you want to discuss if you have any kind of the requirement you want to discuss with me for the LAN specific, WAN specific, G square specific, SASE solution specific. So probably we are going to help you and uh, we are going to give the right uh, step by step approach. How should you follow? Even if you have a doubt, you can discuss with me. There is no problem at all. So I believe this is going to be helpful. Uh, any feedback, any comment, just put in the comment box. You can write your feedback suggestion in the comment box if, if you are watching on the YouTube and it's going to really mean a lot for us if you're watching on the website then also you give your feedback and comment there and uh, that is also going to mean a lot for us and we'll try to improve if your feedback is really going to be you know give some more insights or if you want something else you want to learn about the design and architecture just give the specific topic we'll try to make the like uh, similar kind of the learning tutorial for that as well so have a great day wish you all the best guys thank you